Hey guys, Stephen Bogren here from Pro Physique. Today I want to talk about protein. So hey everybody, hope you're all having a wonderful Thursday today. Woo! Yeah, been a little bit. I know, I didn't get a video out earlier this week. Um, new video editing software, busy life, lots of stuff coming up. Uh, but we heal, we heal now. Um, so let's talk about it. And this one comes from one of my clients who messaged me the question, hey boss, she said boss, I like that. Um, she might not have said boss. Anyways, hey Steven, <laughs> somebody told me that you're wasting your time essentially if you're eating more than 25 grams of protein per meal. Is that correct? And I said, oh man, uh, maybe? And again, as always, you have to look at the whole, the whole of things. And if we look at the RDA for protein, it's pretty low. But if we look at some, you know, recommendations from protein from people like the ISSN or the NSCA, we can see that they can be up to as much as two grams per kilogram of body weight per day, okay? And if we look at the ISSN stance and some of the things that they're saying about resistance trains individuals and athletes, we can see up to three grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. Whoa. Um, now, that's a lot. That definitely means we're probably getting more than 25 grams per meal in. Now, there are some things that we want to look at and assess in terms of our protein intake and dietary needs as athletes, and specifically as physique athletes, because that does matter. One is going to be protein quality. Protein quality going to be dependent on the amino acid composition, how much leucine, some all those kinds of things. And so, if you're getting higher quality proteins, you probably need less of said protein um, to initiate muscle protein synthesis and to do the good things for building muscles. Yes, probably true. <laughs> Is that going to be really beneficial? Yeah. Um, However, I think a lot of people might be like, oh, you gotta eat meat. Not necessarily. You just have to make sure that you're getting enough of your amino acid profiles and full amino acid profiles if you're utilizing other sources of protein that maybe don't have the full spectrum, okay? And you have to be aware of things like leucine content because leucine is going to be one of the big contributors to actually making that happen. So yes, how much protein per meal we get matters. But within that, what also matters is how much leucine we get per meal because different protein sources are going to have different amounts of leucine. Again, the amount you need based on your body weight and really your lean body mass, right? So we want to have sort of an idea of that, but we know that we can be safe if we're getting a gram per pound of body weight. That is probably a really safe bet to say we're over that two grams per kilogram, right? Because a kilogram is 2.2 pounds. So we'd be just over that. It's probably not gonna break the bank. Um, and we should be pretty sure that we're getting enough protein to get that in. Total daily protein. Breaking that up into three, four protein servings a day might mean that you're getting a decent amount of protein. For me, I'm about 187, 188 right now. I get 200 grams of protein roughly a day. That's just my intake. So I'm a little bit above that, which means if I were to do that in four meals, four meals only, that'd be 50 grams of protein per meal. Obviously, a good portion of that is going to be complete protein sources, maybe a protein shake or, you know, a animal protein, whatever it might be. I eat animal protein. I, yeah. Um, if I wanted to do five meals a day, that number would go down, right? Um, and so we're looking at that we're gonna say, hey man, you're wasting a lot of protein. Not necessarily. So one, am I making sure that I'm hitting my leucine threshold? I'm making, making sure that I have enough complete proteins to make sure that my body has what it needs to do? Yes, absolutely. 
Am I spacing it out enough to make sure that I'm accounting for refractory period theory? Yes, a refractory period theory, such as he says, our body is going to break down proteins into amino acids. Amino acids are going to rise in the bloodstream. That's going to trigger muscle protein synthesis. So, um, amino acids need to drop back down to baseline levels before it can be triggered again. So what I always tell everybody, absolute minimum of three hours in between protein feedings. Really, if you get somewhere between four to six, real safe typically, okay? So, I have enough protein in my meal. I have enough leucine in my meal, right? I've scheduled it to where my timing is okay, right? I have enough protein based on my lean body mass. Now, somebody that is smaller and has a lower lean body mass will get away with less protein. Typically, what I tell people, what I tell my clients that I work with, for most females, if you get 25 grams of a complete protein and a reasonably good quality protein source, probably pretty safe in terms of having enough protein for that meal. For dudes, males, depending on their body weight, 35, 30 grams of protein, probably pretty safe typically. That is, for most people, going to be their main protein source. Now, if we have wheat products on top of that, if we have quinoa, that's extra protein. Uh, wheat, not complete protein. Quinoa is. Um, and so our incomplete proteins would be on top of that for most of my individuals, right? Because we're not only counting complete protein as our protein sources. That's not the only thing that has calorie. Incomplete protein sources still have calorie yields. And this is where we're going to get to this. So are we wasting protein by eating over our said amount of protein that we need to trigger muscle protein synthesis? Because that's really what the heart of this question gets to. Are we wasting protein and wasting our time eating extra protein on that front? And the answer I would say is a whopping, overwhelming, super no. <laughs> We're definitely not wasting our time. First and foremost, <clears throat> let's talk about dieting. When we're dieting, higher protein intakes. We're gonna go closer to that three grams per kilogram of protein intake can help to preserve lean body mass. Now, there's a couple things that we can do with that. So yes, higher protein can help with that. Yes, slower rates of fat loss can help with that. Yes, making sure that our resistance training is good can help with that. Boom, boom, pow, hey, yeah. Absolutely, lots of things can help with that, okay? But protein can also help with satiety. Whew, that feeling of fullness of like, mmm, I got a meal, I'm not so hungry anymore, I ain't so angry, I'm not mad, I ain't hangry life. Yes, it can absolutely help with that which also helps with us sticking to the diet. So, we're th gonna say, yes, are we necessarily getting more protein synthesis because we're eating more protein? No, not necessarily, absolutely not. So in that aspect, maybe they're right. Yes, you're right, absolutely. You're not going to necessarily trigger more muscle protein synthesis by eating 80 grams of protein in a sitting than you would by getting 40 grams of protein in a sitting. More are not necessarily always better. <clears throat> However, it does have other benefits that we can look at that are great, especially during a dieting phase. So one, yes, we're getting better ability to hold on to lean tissue, right? And if you're competing, you know that it's not just about getting super shredded, it's also about holding on to muscle. We're also getting the opportunity to stay more satiated and full. Yeah. Awesome. Helps us to stick to our diet. And that is a big win in and of itself. Three, protein harder to store as fat. It has a higher thermogenic effect. So whereas fats, pretty easy to go through. Carbs, a little bit of a thermogenic effect depending on fiber and stuff. Protein, absolutely. It has to be broken down into amino acids. Shuttled through the body. Transferred into glucose then used and stored. So a little bit longer of a process and you're probably a little bit less likely to store protein as fat in an overage than maybe now. Can it still be done? Yes, it absolutely can be. But would it be preferential? Probably not. So lots of benefits to eating a little bit more protein and I have yet to see any research about protein really being tough on the kidneys. Now, I know that that's still some feedback that some doctors give, and yes, uh, maybe if kidney function is already like hurt or not great, maybe then we need to focus on it, and that's something that we need to keep in mind. And I do have clients where 
kidney function is not great and, and so we are keeping their protein lower. But if you have healthy kidneys and good functioning kidneys, not something we need to be worried about. So fuck, I'm getting a long speech on here. So I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna leave it right there, guys. I will talk to you next week. Y'all have a great one.